right, our landing page is looking pretty good. Everything that was in our Figma file is in here. The only problem is uh, nothing uh, really hovers or moves, which is what we really, really want and something Webflow is very, very good at. Uh, so we're going to add some final touches in here before we sort of move into final cleanup and launch. Uh, one of the first things that I want to do is add in some components. So in a component, this little box here in Webflow is something we haven't used on this page yet, mostly because we would use it more if we were doing a bunch of different pages on a site. Like for example, if we built out like the get started as its own page or a demo page, we would want to reuse this nav container. We wouldn't want to copy and paste it uh, into a new one and make changes because we want any changes we make to the nav to happen to every nav on the website. So the way we do that is we select the parent container of the uh, section we want to turn into a component. We'll click this gear or right click. Oh, not that. We want to right click <laughs> and we're going to click create component. And so it'll ask us to give it a name. I'll call this one nav bar. And now we have a component. Once you click in here, you can see that you can still edit as normal, but it grays everything out. So while you are in a component, you can only edit within that component. It really kind of singles you down here. Because once you leave, uh, you kind of have to double click to get back in here and edit the component. And that's mostly to prevent you from making a change that's going to go across the whole site without you realizing it. So now that it's in green, we know it's a component. And if we were to add another page, we could add the nav in. So the most common components are going to be our nav. And I'm also going to make our footer section a component. I'm also going to change the tag here to footer so that uh, it's just semantically sound and everything has a name. And we'll call this footer. Awesome. Other things you could make components are sections. Um, we could have made this a whole component and reused it and dropped it into a different uh, section. Uh, you can make buttons components if you want to. Uh, the main thing with components is you can also, if you want to change something throughout components, you would click this little uh, property button, the little purple one, and that would allow you to change the text. So say you wanted to have the same layout, but change the text. That's how you do that. But we're just doing one landing page for now. So we're good with just doing the nav bar and the footer. The next thing that I want to do is uh, link up these sections. So up here, product features and testimonials. I want those to go to uh, product stuff in this section, features um, in here. Oh, and I didn't even change the features text. So why don't we uh, do that for our brains? So that's going to be this. There we go. Great. So this is going to be our features and then this will be testimonials. So the way that we can do anchor links to sections is select the section that you want to anchor link and then just give it an ID. So we're going to give this an ID of product because um, it's the first section in that product list. We're going to give this one an ID of features and then this one will have an ID of testimonials. Beautiful. Now, if we go up here to our nav bar links, we can change the link to a section. So we have just regular links. We could link to another page, but this is the icon we want for sections. And you can see there's a bunch of stuff in here and everything that's in here is basically anything that has an ID. So we can also see that um, all of our form stuff brought over too. So that's great but I am only interested in product for this one. I am interested in features for this one. And I'm interested in testimonials for this one. Perfect. Uh, another thing I want to do is uh, link all of our buttons to the contact form at the bottom. So I'm also going to give this an ID of contact. I think if this were a real page, these would all, these two buttons would go different places. But for now, we're just sending them all to this, this contact form. So we have those two. We'll have these two as well. And then this one in our nav component. 
beautiful. Cool. All right, so we have all of our buttons linked up and we can even check here and see if we go to testimonials, that leads to there. Features leads there. Product, it's good to check your work here. And that looks good too. Cool, so we've got our link set up. And so the last thing I wanna do here is start adding some animations. So I think it makes sense to kind of start at the top I think it would be fun to start with a little hero animation to bring everything in here. The kind of thought I have is fading in and up all this text, this bubble growing and this kind of fading up too, and then the nav bar and this section coming in at the same time. So I am going to set all of that up, but then we'll stagger it a little because that's the real trick with, with animation. Go to interactions, page trigger, page load. Um, and I'm going to do this when page starts loading. So you'll see that we already have some animations in here from when we did our nav bar. We're going to put in a new one called page load. And I am going to start just animating all of these different elements. Like before, I'm going to add a default state. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to do the whole div. And I'm going to set the initial state by checking this little box here. I'm going to set the opacity of this. And I can also just drag it up to that initial state block. And change this in here. This section below, I also want to change the opacity. And then up here, oops, one thing that you cannot animate are components on their own, which is something I forgot about. So we will wrap this in a div block and call it main nav wrap. So that way we can have just something to target because once it's in that, it'll be able to be manipulated, but outside of that, it, it just won't. So let us do that. So this opacity will be zero. Great. And then the last thing I'm going to target, uh, oops, is our hero circle. So now I've got the opacity of everything fading in at the same time. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, move things. And so this is going to start a little bit high. So we'll do negative like 20 and then move it down to zero. And then for our div block, I want the nav to come down. I want everything else to come up. So with the div block, I will do move. We'll also do negative 20. Oh, sorry, positive 20, because positive puts it down. I'm gonna move that into here, duplicate it, and then we'll do zero. For our hero image, that is also going to come up. That'll be... I'll put it down just a little bit further just to add a little bit of just difference between the two. And then section is also going to move. And you'll notice with all these, I'm not targeting the class. I'm just targeting the selected element um, because none of them have like unique classes and I don't want all of them coming up at the same time. Like this is, I don't like that it's, yeah, that's a lot better. Ooh, bug. Great. And then it looks like the circle never completely becomes visible. And instead of moving the circle, I actually want to scale it so I can change the scale here to be one on default. Um, 
and I want to make it just a little bit smaller, but you'll notice uh, you got to be careful because just stepping it up will make it crazy big uh, or small. So I'm going to do 0.09 uh, as my starting scale. So not that much. And let's see how we like that. Yeah, I think that's nice. Okay. So we're starting to get somewhere, but the first thing I want to add to everything is an ease. So I'll do that easing of out court that I used before. I think that is pretty nice. I'm actually also going to make it a little bit longer, all of them for now. Yeah. Now I want to think about order. I think I want our text and our image to come in first, followed by the nav bar and the section. So if I think about that in here, this is all happening first. And then our main nav wrap, I'm going to give that delay of just 0.2 for everything with um, our main nav wrap. And then the section, I'm going to give it a delay of 0.3. And let's see if that is just kind of feels crazy. This is kind of one of those imprecise things that you kind of just have to look at. Like that feels a little too late. So I'm going to do instead of 0 0.2, 0 0.1. And for this one, I will do 0.2. So let's see. I think that looks a lot better. I might even step the image uh, and hero circle scale even more. So instead of 0.1, let's do 05. <laughs> this might be really kind of getting getting into it, but see, even that just looks way better. So that is something that's just going to happen when the page loads. So every time you preview it, it will show you that new thing. Looking good. If you found this video useful and want to learn more, be sure to check out our complete guide to Webflow tutorial. It provides comprehensive tutorials and expert guidance to help you build professional grade websites and also has courses on other no code tools and if you haven't done so already or if you're new here subscribe to the channel for more content like this share it with a friend and if you have any questions leave a comment below thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video